As we've discussed all afternoon, the New Mexico State Board of Regents and these five men, former head coach Greg Heyer, former associate head coach Dominique Taylor, and former NMSU players Deshondre Washington, Dr. Bradley, and Kim Aiken Jr. are all named as defendants in a lawsuit filed today by fellow former players Shakiru Odunewu, Deuce Benjamin, and William Benjamin. Deuce's father, who is also in the NMSU Athletics Hall of Fame and the boys basketball coach at Las Cruces High School. No criminal charges have been filed in the case at this time, but it has been referred to the New Mexico Attorney General for possible criminal charges. We want to warn you, many of the details are tough to read and to listen to. This all stems from the February 10th hazing allegations filed with NMSU police that ultimately canceled the 2022-23 regular season and resulted in hires firing on February 14th. It's clear from this lawsuit that what happened is much more serious than hazing, which is how it was initially portrayed by NMSU. It includes allegations of an incident at a hotel where Washington pulled Deuce Benjamin into a room and forced him to remove his clothes at which time he grabbed Benjamin Scrotum in front of multiple women who were also in the room. It also alleges that Odunewu was exposed in the shower in the Pan American Center locker room by Aiken and Bradley and forced to do squats while they slapped his buttocks and filmed the incident. That's according to the lawsuit. Greg Heyer was also informed multiple times about these alleged incidents saying he would step in, but according to the lawsuit again, never did. Additionally, when Odunewu told Dominique Taylor about these incidents, Taylor allegedly laughed at him and said, what do you want me to do? In the last few minutes, we spoke with William Benjamin Sr. and his attorney, Jolene Youngers. I asked Benjamin if his opinion of NMSU, his alma mater, a school that he took to the Sweet 16 in the early 90s, had changed. He said, frankly, yes. It's just disappointing. You know, it's just very disappointing um, um, that we have to that we have to talk about this and go through this, you know. Um, uh, I mean, that's 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 really all I can say. Comment on 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 that. It's just it's just disappointing. They both acted inappropriately and failed to act. So, um, had they handled it correctly, we very well may not be where we're at right now. Per the lawsuit, William Benjamin Sr. reached out to hire an athletic director, Mario Mocha, the day before the police report was filed with NMSU police to discuss these ac accusations with them, but neither returned his phone calls. KTSM has reached out to the coaches hire and Dominique Taylor and the players Aiken Bradley and Washington. So far, Bradley, the only one to respond, referring us to his attorney. We have not been able to reach his attorney just yet. Uh, as well. New Mexico State University responding to this lawsuit with the statement here, quote, while NMSU does not comment on pending litigation, we want to assure everyone that this issue is being taken seriously. As we announced earlier this year, the university is working with Greenberg Traurig to look into the allegations. The statement continues, their work is underway and running in parallel to our own internal investigation into this matter, end quote. Athletic Director Mario Mocha also declined comment to me when reached by phone this afternoon. And those were just some of the despicable accusations made in the lawsuit that were allegedly never stopped by any coaches or players for the Aggies. There was also an incident during the November 12th road trip to play the Utah Miners. This one again back on November 12th of 2022, even before the shooting in Albuquerque involving Aggies forward Mike Peak the night before a rivalry game with the University of New Mexico at the pit. It paints a picture of how early these assaults were happening and how the coaching staff allegedly did nothing to stop them. Here you go. Deshondre Washington, Dr. Bradley and Kim Aiken Jr. tackled Shaq onto the floor in the back of the bus. Aiken and Bradley pinned him down and pulled his pants and underwear down to his ankles. Shaq was held face down and could not speak due to a hand held over his mouth by one of the three. He was terrified. They slapped his bare buttocks and he felt fingers inserted into his buttocks while his scrotum was simultaneously squeezed. Despite his efforts to resist, Aiken, Bradley, and Washington were all large men and all on top of him. He could not get away. He was forced to endure the painful and humiliating experience as it continued for an indeterminable amount of time. No one did anything to stop the attack. His teammates were afraid to come to his aid. In response to the attack, one of the coaches allegedly turned around and yelled out to stop playing around. Now, according to the lawsuit, NMSU Hire and Taylor had knowledge of these alleged incidents by no later than November 12, 2022, and again, did nothing about them. It also alleges that at least one other player and staff member were subjected to these incidents. The lawsuit alleges that by this lack of action, the three players were empowered to continue with their assaults. We'll have much more on this developing story at 10 on KTSM.